Welcome to Americana Archives. Travel back in time with us as we go throughout America's historic newspapers to find the lost and forgotten history of America. Today's story comes from the great state of Kansas. It's reported in the Barber County Index from February 9th, 1887. Today's headline is the Texas Panhandle, its peculiar, unique, and unrivaled social institutions. The subheadline is variegated populations over which the state of Texas has virtually no civil or criminal jurisdiction, a veritable republic of toleration. Today's story was originally reported by the Chicago Herald. It says, If the truth were known, the panhandle of Texas would be voted the political, social, and material curiosity of this country. There is nothing like it in this country or any other country. It is strictly original, stands out by itself, and freezes on to its peculiarities with the steadfastness characteristic of America in general and Texas in particular. The political and social condition of things in the panhandle would not be tolerated by any other state but Texas. The panhandle is a kind of offshoot of the state. It does not consider itself a part of the commonwealth in good standing. The panhandle covers a territory about as large as the state of New York. It extends from the Indian Territory on the north almost to the Texas and Pacific Railroad on the south and from New Mexico on the west almost to the Fort Worth and Denver Railroad on the east. It is larger than many European countries that sing aloud in an international chorus. Within its confines are mounds and forests, lakes and streams, valleys and rivers, iron mines, copper mines, silver mines, coal mines that are known of, and perhaps much more mineral wealth that is not known of. Hamlets, ranches, caves, mesas, mineral springs, steep precipices, shady groves, and many verdant plains. The panhandle is divided into 50 free counties, but not more than six or seven of them are organized. The people of the panhandle have a very supreme contempt for law and have not much more taste for a sheriff or any attorney than they have for a grass burner or a cattle thief. When the word law is used, it should be remembered that it applies to the enactments of what the Panhandle folks contemptuously term the Austin Law Factory. There is an unwritten code in the Panhandle, and woe to the man who violates it. A man must not steal cattle in the Panhandle. Neither must he cut fences, burn grass, fill up wells with earth, break dams, or kill a man in cold blood. There are less than 100 women in the panhandle, and they are all good women. There are no jails in the region. Fines are looked upon with contempt, and the only punishment awarded to those who violate the code of the region is death or expulsion. If a man kills another in a fight, he has to answer before no law court. His right to kill a man in a fair fight is not questioned. If a man kills another by stealth, that is, if he steals up behind him and plunges a knife in his back or shoots him unaware, Judge Lynch immediately takes hold of the offender, administers rigid justice devoid of technicalities or quibbles, or stays of proceeding, and if the murder was cold-blooded and cowardly, the murderer is more certain of being hanged than he would be in St. Louis, Chicago, New York, San Francisco, New Orleans, or Galveston. If a man is convicted of cattle stealing before Judge Lynch, he is certain of being hanged. If a man is caught cutting a fence or setting fire to grass, he is shot down without hesitation, 
or have subsequently arraigned before Judge Lynch, and it is shown on testimony, direct or circumstantial, that he was guilty of the offense, he will be hanged. This is about all the law they have in the panhandle. A man must take care of himself. He must fight his own battles. If he is not able to fight, if he is afraid to fight, if he has any prejudice against fighting, he had better seek some other location than the panhandle of Texas for an abiding place. In fact, the panhandle might be described as one vast region devoid of law, defying law, getting along comfortably without law. Here may be found murderers from Maine, forgers from New York, defrauders from Ohio, fiends from Georgia, horse thieves from Missouri, deserters from every regiment in the United States Army, road agents from California, bullion thieves from Nevada, ballot box stuffers from Illinois, escaped convicts from every state in the Union, and fugitives from justice from every civilized country in the world. In the confines of the panhandle, a man is as safe from a writ, from handcuffs, from the clutch of a sheriff, as he is if he were a squatter on a quarter section in the Arctic Circle. Many men, with various prices on their heads in different states of the Union, are now prosperous citizens in the panhandle of Texas, men who now count their cattle by the thousands, whose barbed wire fences measure many hundred miles. Of course, the great majority of the panhandle people are not addicted to reminiscence. The man who received mail matter from a former home in another state is a rarity. But of course, there are exceptions. No doubt many panhandle men could prove that they are wearing the same name now that they inherited from their parents. But it is not considered good taste in the panhandle to be too inquisitive. And the man who persists in delving into the affairs of another man is almost certain to have a fight on his hands without unnecessary delay. Nearly half the men of the region are known mainly by a nickname. Such appellations as Curly Bill, Bronco Joe, Whiskey Jack, Poker Dave, Irish Tim, Dutch Henry, Frenchy, Scotty, Fatty, Slim, Keno Mike, and Rowdy Jim are among those frequently heard at ranches and other centers of population. The people are social, hospitable, and generous. The ethical code of the region forbids any inquiry concerning a stranger. If the new arrival wants a job at wire punching or line riding, it is taken for granted that it is his intention to become a permanent resident. If he loves around, Without attempting to secure a job at anything, he becomes an object of suspicion. Detectives sometimes have the hardihood to penetrate the panhandle, but if they should be suspected, they are invariably treated to hospitable graves. Detectives and law officers are not wanted and will not be tolerated in the panhandle. The permanent sojourners in the region make no pretense of denying that they are there because of a disagreement with the rules of action prescribed by law in the regions whence they came. It is a republic of toleration, and mind your own business is the Constitution. Thank you for joining us today. Remember before you leave to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and remember to like and comment below. And we will see you next time on Americana Archives.